First of all, well, you get a writer who talk about something that ain't never played basketball in his life. He got an opinion. That's all he got. He got an opinion. Give you plus and minus, whatever. Then you get out there and play and see if I bust your head wide open. You know what I'm saying? I tell her, I tell her, any, any reporter, come play me then. And I'll bust your head wide to the white meat. What's going on, guys? Speedy Mormon here from Complex and the guy singing across from me. You may have seen him before. Uh, you may know him as Gary Payton, the Seconds Pops. Uh, you may have seen him on the pack of the weed that you rolled up last. <laughs> or you may know him as the glove. He's an NBA Hall of Famer. Gary Payton is in the building. You had to mention my weed, man. It's the money. Had... We always got to talk about the thing. money. Hey, man, you know that thing is hot, too. So I've there. heard. It's on fire So I've there. heard, GP. Yeah, but I'm glad you got me here. Boy, you got me set out out here. It's you got the right. old school GP. Mm -hmm. boy, and then the old school GP. <laughs> but it's all good. We only do that for people who are NBA Hall of Famers. If you're an NBA All-Star, even nine times, that's not enough. But if you're a Hall of Famer, then you get this type of treatment. Man, well then I'm bang, I'm a Hall of Famer, so I'm good. You lit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we'll talk about uh, NBA All-Star stuff in just a second. However, your son is killing it right now. How does that feel, not only to see him continuing your legacy, but doing his own thing and making his own as well? Well, you know what? As I look at my son and, and the things that he went through, you know, thinking that he's going to get drafted, didn't get drafted, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, going through the journey that he's going through right now. I'm glad that the wizard has finally stepped up and said, yo, let me get this kid. What they don't, what people don't understand is my, my son is not like me. The wizards for really uh, understood that. They made a choice. They gave him a guaranteed contract. Now he's out there killing it. When a kid can come in and, and for four games and get 17 steals, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he's very athletic. He's, um, he's very long, more athletic than I was. And I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm very proud of him. But I leave him to himself. You know, I'm gonna yeah. leave him to himself. I'm gonna surprise him in one game this year. And then I don't want to take the shine from him. I'm gonna surprise him a little bit, uh, let him get that little shine on, and and hopefully that you know I, 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 this can take off from here and he becomes somebody. For sure. Now there aren't that many father-son duos that pan out in a very successful way. You are now, I guess, one of them. How often do you keep your eye on some of the other father-son duos, like maybe LeBron and his son or D Wade and his son? Do you watch that? Not at all. I, I I really don't don't get into that because we all fathers, man, and let them do what they do. Uh, they've been talking about this LeBron stuff, about how he be at his son's games and he's going crazy. Why not? If it wasn't LeBron, you wouldn't even be talking about him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like what D-Wade does. He, he stays away from his son a little bit. He doesn't take it as far. Um, as you know, if you think about it, how many superstars' sons have been really, really great? Not many, not, not many, many superstars. Not superstars, right, there right, you go. Right. I, I don't think it's been one. I don't think it's been one. You know what I'm saying? We gotta think about it. Superstars, sons. Right. It's not been one. I don't think it's been one at all. I can't think of one. There you go. Hey, you know, so we can't say Curry because his father wasn't really, really a superstar. superstar. We right. can't say Clay because his, 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 his daddy wasn't really, really a superstar. Right. So that's how we gotta, we gotta understand that. And LeBron would be the first if his son come up in there, and D-Wade would be the first if he's done, and mine if he can pan out in the next couple of years. So, you know, it's a lot to follow a Hall of Fame's dad. Yeah. That, that's a lot. And then especially to be named after him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, that's a lot. You were the only player, I think still the only player in your draft class that is a Hall of Famer. Why do you think that is? You know what, Speedy, I, 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 don't, I, can't, I can't put my hand on that. You know what I'm saying? Derek Coleman could have been. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Chris Jackson, who is McMood, um, uh, Roof right now. But it's it's a God given and a God chosen. You know what I'm saying? Then nobody really know nothing about me. You know what I'm saying? And I became the number two pick. Mm -hmm. And I was I was all American in, I, in college. You know, nobody knew about me coming from Oakland and in and, and a town where they didn't know me. And then I go to a small school, you know, as Oregon State. But it, it happens. And it's just something that just happened because all of them guys were great basketball players and it's just something that I panned out and I became a Hall of Famer. Does not practicing or practicing less lead to a longer NBA career? I remember hearing something about you mentioning to someone, yo, listen, if you want to play longer, just practice less. Well, that, that, that was working for me <laughs> because you think about it, 
as you look at what I did, I played 82 straight games for six straight years, years in a row. That, that takes a wear and tear on your body, and especially if I'm playing at 42 minutes a game mm -hmm. out of 48. I'm only sitting down six, six minutes. The injuries was coming, but I was playing through the injuries because that's just the way I was. You know what I'm saying? If I sprain an ankle, I'm not gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna go back there and tape it up. I'm gonna be in a, um, in a training room all day, every day, trying to get it right. Uh, they made up a, a chamber for me where you suck all the oxygen up and, and, and bring your, 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 um, your uh, muscles back. That was the way I did it. And I really didn't care about it. But nowadays it's a mandatory now that you don't really practice like that. They only can get you for two hours on the floor and then everything else is over. So I don't understand why you're so tired. What you tired about? <laughs> now, if I go back to back and I play two and a half hours in one game, and I'm only really playing 30 minutes. And then I come back the next day and only play two and a half hours again and only play the 30 minutes. So I'm playing 60 minutes out of, what is that, 96 minutes? Mm -hmm. So I'm not really, really tripping. So I'm missing 36 minutes somewhere. So where can you be tired at? You know what I'm saying? So all this load management crap, you know what I'm saying? Play basketball, man. You're getting $50 million a year, so what? You know, go get your bed on the plane or something, you know? So I don't really get that, but that's just the way it is in this era. So that was my next question, the load management, you think, a fluke, like I'm shit. done with that. What, what are you load managing for? You know what I'm saying? They don't have double days no more. They don't do none of that. We don't have two days in practice. It's a mandatory that you only be on the floor for two hours, two and a half hours. You, you can't do this, you can't do that. It is what it is, but this is, like I said, this is their era. And this is what it, this is what makes it happen. But the only thing I, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping off of is that a lot of them are getting hurt more. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of more basketball players getting hurt, yeah. and I don't understand why that is. We have to we always have to do a study on all that. You know what I'm saying? Is it because you're not lifting weights more to right. make you make your muscles stronger? Because you are playing a lot of basketball all year round, right. or is it that? You know, it's something that is, the body is not the same. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a different body. Right. You know what I'm saying? Being younger and don't understand how to take care of your body. I'm curious as to all your opinion on these new self-proclaimed experts who speak about, you know, NBA analytics and, uh, you know, the plus and minus and, and, and things like that. <laughs> Does that mean anything to you, a person who actually played on the court versus these people who have never played the game speaking on? Man, first of all, well, you get a writer who talk about something that ain't never played basketball in his life. He got an opinion. That's all he got. He got an opinion. Give you plus and minus, whatever. Then you get out there and play and see if I bust your head wide open. You know what I'm saying? I tell her, I tell her, any any reporter, come play me then, and I'll bust your head wide to the white meat. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I tell them, man. They, 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 they always think they know everything. You know what I'm saying? You don't know nothing. You ain't been out there. All you do is watch a lot of basketball and you see us run plays. So now you know about the game and then you ain't never been at that level ever in your life. And you're going to talk about, oh, he's going to be this, he's going to be that. You don't know what they're going to be. You know what I'm saying? Put some sneakers on and, and try it. And let's see if you can do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they really mess with media people during the time because they always want to critique you about what you're doing. I'd be like, man, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Because you really don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? You just go in a pain about anything that you do. So I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, other than that, if you ain't played the game, shut up. Don't so talk what, to me. So when these experts say things like, oh, but when he's on the court, you know, he's minus eight or what? That means nothing to Gary Payton. That don't mean nothing to me because the simple fact is, is because you're having a bad game and you don't do assists or whatever, your job is to make your team better and to make everything around you better. And now, if you're struggling, you're not going to keep struggling. Why are you in the NBA? They picked you for some reason mm -hmm. and they're keeping you, right? And then when you look at these guys who make five and six points a year, and then all of a sudden, we give them a contract, four years, $80 million. They must be worth something. You know what I'm saying? So the plus minus ain't doing nothing for me anyway because the office ain't really telling you nothing anyway because they reward you with 80 million. So and you only average seven points a game. So what are we talking about? So plus minuses don't mean nothing to me. That don't mean anything to me. If you can make your team and whatever your role be on that team be okay, then you're fine. You know what I'm saying? It's about what the organization thinks about you and what they think your value is to that team. 
and then you're good. What was the best moment of your career, aside from winning an NBA championship, would you say? Uh, the Olympics. When, um, Which one? Both of them, really. The first one was a major one because it was in Atlanta. If you think about it, if you get honored to be wearing a USA jersey, and we think about what's going on now in the world, about people over in Iraq, everywhere else, dying and getting their legs blew off and to represent the USA to give us an opportunity to stay over here safe and play in these type of games. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it for money and for free. And they're, they're getting it and, and they're doing it for little or nothing. Mm -hmm. And they're getting hurt and getting killed and shot at. And you think about how much is that a, pri a privilege to do that? That's a privilege. So when I bowed my head down and they put that metal over my, over my head, and I got the USA on my chest and I got millions of people watching me, that's a, bear, that's a pleasure, that's an honor. Mm -hmm. Because I got other people that's protecting me that ain't getting the medals or honors. The right. only time they get a medal is if something happened to, to them, them and we right. send them home. Right, right, so right. we gotta think about that and we gotta understand that that's a privilege for us to be doing that. And you felt that twice when they put that gold medal felt on you. Felt it twice and, 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 and you know, to become, to know that we the world's greatest, we knew that from day one. You know, we just had to go out there and prove it. Obviously, everyone knows Gary Payton for the trash talk. I wonder, though, have there ever been times where you got into it with fans, maybe celebrities that were sitting courtside? Yes, I have. I got into it with everybody. I didn't care who it was. If anybody opened their mouth, they gonna get it. Were there any celebrities that come to mind or stick out? Celebrities knew what was happening. They don't know what, they don't want to get out like that. Because <laughs> you know that, that we got to go to the club afterwards. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. we're going to have a love, we're going to have a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about no bodyguards or nothing like that. Because I had a lot of bodyguards, a lot of dudes from the hood <laughs> with me. So it was all good. So I didn't really worry about that. And they knew I wasn't about all that talk. You know, once we get in the club, it's going to be on. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't care about no bodyguards or all or none of that. Because I had some dudes from the streets that was like bodyguards too. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to do all of that. <laughs> Obviously, it's a different era where players are a lot heavier on social media. No such thing back when you played. KD and Kendrick Perkins getting into it. I know you've seen it. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the whole thing? Kendrick did what he wanted to do. He became, he became, he became a blow-up icon right now. That's all we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? He went at it. Only thing I don't, I don't like is you, that you talk about what you did in the, in the locker room when we were teammates. Mm. Whatever I tell you in the locker room between me and you is, is, is personal. Don't go there. You became an um, a analyst now. I became that too. But I keep it real. If you trash, you trash. I'm going to tell you trash. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say nothing else about nothing else. But if you trash, you trash. You know what I'm saying? If you're not playing the game the right way, I'm going to do it. I think that they both went over the line by saying what he said. He has an opinion. His opinion was that he thought that uh, Westbrook was the best player to, 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 to wear well, a jersey in Oklahoma City. Okay, that's fine. KD went out and said, you average two or three points, man, as a center, you should try to do your build your, your confidence or build your whatever. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? They're going back and forth. But they got enough time to do that crap. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's crap to me. You know what I'm saying? Come talk to me personally. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me head up. We don't even have to go around everybody. We can just go in that little room right there and just see what happens. You know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is. Just go in the room and talk it out. You know what I'm saying? They both seven footers. They, and you know, but Perkins might be a little bit more heavyweight. But you know what I'm saying? But Katie things, Leach might be a little Yeah, but if you got them things, man, them things gonna let you have it, man. You know what I'm saying? Word. Hit you in your nose, in your mouth, and you, you'll feel it. You know what I'm saying? So let them things go loose. You'll be all right. Do you think that Westbrook is the best player to ever wear OKC jersey? Well, you guys got to understand, if I ask you this, you, you think you think Westbrook better than um, Durant? I don't think so. Okay, me neither. So, but I'm not taking that as personal, and I don't want, you know, I don't want people to, I don't want Westbrook to think it's personal, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? KD is, is a better basketball player, really. You know what I'm saying? But Westbrook is an outstanding basketball player. But that is just the way people's opinion is. That's an opinion, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And Kendrick's opinion is because of what KD did. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, and I don't think you approve of what KD did. When you're down to a team 3-1, and then you lose, and you go and, add, and, then you go and, and join a team. We wasn't cut like that. Michael Jordan beat me in 96. I was up for, I was up for um, free agency. Who did I go back to? 
I went back to the Seattle Supersonics because I wanted to bust Michael Jordan head open because I wanted to go back and get at it. It's a party's opinion and that's just the way they are. That's him. He wanted to do that fine and dandy. That's his choice. So that's what people make an opinion about things. I don't have an opinion about that. We have to talk about the party pack. GP, you are on, uh, you, you have some sort of brand relationship with cookies and it seems to be uh, pushing, uh, you know, a lot of people to have a good time. Um, how does that feel to be in a whole new era? Uh, not era, a whole new realm and arena. You know, this would have been a problem in the day because they would have thought about uh, the cannabis business and the, and the marijuana being a negative situation. Now that it's turning legal, a lot of people are understanding it. I didn't get into this business because of the smoke, the, the smoke this cannabis and the, and the be partying like that. I got into it to help people. My mom just passed away three months ago. Sorry to hear I that. wanted to wanted to get into this business so that I can get my mom off of medication and get her to just start feeling better and not being in pain all the time. And marijuana was coming and, and, and cannabis came to my mind. It came about when some of the guys in the hood in San Francisco said, you know what, we just made a strand and it came out to 2020. And they was like, nah, we gonna honor the OG. And the OG is me. So they put, the, they put my name on that and um, it's a guy, a guy named Burner who everybody mm -hmm. might really know about in cookies. Uh, he's one of the young guys that, 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 that admired me and wanted to do this thing. And I just went into business with them and, and I'm gonna get something started. I'm gonna get something started. It's not all about that, but it's about the life now that it's happening. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna get into the other stuff. I'm gonna get in there trying to help people get off of medication and do other things with, with medical cannabis. And, it, and it's a business that is, is booming right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy of it. I'm just happy because they honor me the way, you know, they did. They just gave, gave a guy that they admired and they called me the OG and they put my name on there and it and became popular. For sure. I know you don't smoke, but have you ever tried your own strand? No, no. Will no. you ever try it? No, I don't think so. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'll just be honest with people. I don't, I don't smoke, you know, I don't think that's, that's something for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, if I look down at my chest and I see my chest beating and I think my heart coming out of it, I don't think I should be a part of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it goes. So, but to be a part of it and, 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 and have these guys enjoy it and be safe with it, that's what I want to build around, or around it. Be safe with it. You know, it's something that's happening. My kids do it. I can't stop it. You know, they're grown. So, uh, um, but you know, you guys, if you want to try, try it. You know what I'm saying? It, it's good. I just try to put a product out there that's going to be really good. And that's all I do. I don't want you to be, if you're paying your money for it, I want you to have a good product. NBA All-Star Weekend is next month. Uh, it's shaping up to be a good one. I'm curious as to your thoughts on just NBA All-Star as a whole. Why is it such a monumental uh, tentpole event for culture at large? Well, basically because what we're doing now, you know, you got music. You got clothing, all that stuff is starting to be a big part of, of the NBA. You know, as you see the Westbrooks, you see the Hardens, they coming out here with these clothes. Uh, you know, you see the D-Ways, they coming out with different fashions. The music is starting to be a big part of it. What do you see all, all the time at the all of the All-Stars? You see all the performers, you see all the rappers, you see everybody. That's what it's becoming. This culture is becoming that. And I, I think for you to be named top 24 players in the NBA and an all-star. That means you're, 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 the, you're, you're the one. You're the one. And you're going out there and having a good time. And this event is a big event. This is probably the biggest out of all sports because you don't go to the Pro Bowl no more. You, you don't do nothing at the hockey all-star. <laughs> you don't do nothing at the baseball. We don't see, we don't look at the home run, uh, the derby no more. What you look at, you look at what you're gonna see on uh, at the NBA all-star because you get to go around to these guys and you get to go to different venues and do their parties, do their, all their stuff. They they collaborating with Rick Ross. They collaborate with P. Diddy. They collaborate with Jay-Z. Fans want to see that. That's what they want to see. And that's when you having parties with these guys and you hang with these guys and you get to see them one-on-one. -on -one. 
that's what all these young good people want to see nowadays and that's where the hip-hop and all the stuff and the clothing comes involved and that's what it is the nba all-star is probably the hottest one of the hottest sports you know one of the hottest events in sports right now and that's what it is the fan voting is open now for the starters for Eastern and Western Conference. Um, my last question before they kill me over here. Um, <laughs> NBA Y'all be quiet now, don't kill him over here. We got a lot of time over here. Y'all heard me? They're telling me we have no time left. No, we got time. Go, go past time, all right? Um, NBA All-Star Weekend is something that you've been a part of for nine years. I know that you, or you were an All-Star nine times, rather. I, I read that you used to prank people during NBA All-Star Weekend. Is there a prank? that sticks out besides the Carl Malone story, which is a classic. That was the biggest one. <laughs> he, you know, he used to, we used to call him Gators and Jeans. That's all he did, because he wore the tight Gators with the jeans on, he real country, you know what I'm saying? But no, we used to just, I used to just, they used to just give me the camera and I just prank everybody, man. Shaq was a big part of all this stuff because he's a big prankster. Mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of things, man. Uh, come out and catch everybody when they were, if something happened to them in the, in the, in the days in, uh, before, mm -hmm. I would hit them with it. I got Jay Kidd one year. I got uh, Kevin Garnett another year. But it was just about fun. It was just about coming out here, making people laugh. You know what I'm saying? Because. I'm only gonna do it once mm -hmm. because after that, after that three days, it's back, back to, to war. Yeah, back to it's business. back to war because I'm I ain't gonna like you no more. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because the next part of the year, I'm gonna go at your dome. I'm going at your head with every all the time. So have fun during that time, and then get to introduce yourself to them and get to know them as a person and do that. So that's what I thought. I wanted them to understand that I was a jokester. I'm funny and I'm cool. But when you see me on the court from now on, it's over. For sure. As a story defender, maybe one of the best defenders and the only point guard to ever win the Defensive Player of the Year, when you watch today's game, who's somebody out there who you know that you'd be able to lock up? Well, it's two. Uh, I think I got, I think I got um, Marcus Smart, and then I got um, Beverly. And then you know I gotta put my son in there. Mm -hmm. So them three is, 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 is something that I think that's going is close to me. And not on both ends of the floor, they on that defensive side because of the offensive side, I was pretty pretty good. So I think they are close. Word. All right, Gary Payton, thank you so much for stopping by. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Speed. NBA All-Star Weekend is next month. Uh, will you be tuned in? I'll be tuned in. I'll be right there. Okay, I'm me too. Maybe there. I'll see you I'll out be there. in Chicago. You'll see okay. me. Okay, all right, GP. All right, thank you, bro. For sure.